Well, again, praise Lord, everybody. This is your pastor, Rich Forsey Smith. And we're continuing our study uh, in our devotionals um, this week from Ephesians chapter four. And a part of our uh, whole discussion about relational health, wellness, and wholeness. We began about six, eight weeks ago dealing with the aspect of Christian life it has to do with the importance and the value uh, of our relationships with one another. How we relate to God, of course, how we relate even to those in our families, how we relate in the church, how we relate even to our fellow workers, how we relate to people that we meet every day, the social contacts. Again, as we emphasized at the very beginning, the Lord made us uh, in creation relational beings. Uh, there is no such thing as spiritual lone rangers. That was never God's intention. It was always that we walk together and again, we grow together in relationship. And so that's why we spend so much time talking about relationships. And I hope you have truly embraced some of this teaching. And I hope it has affected you uh, in a way that it really impacts uh, the direction of your life. It may impact the depth of your understanding and your commitment of what it means to walk with God. Uh, I said on early this week uh, in our discussion that uh, one of the aspects of, of godliness that perhaps we have not focused enough on in the issue of relationships is the area of being kind, of kindness. So our teaching earlier this week was about speaking kindly. And again, uh, as people of God, we are so committed, as we should be from the word of God, in things like obedience, uh, sanctification, godliness, uh, commitment. Uh, but one of the things that we don't talk much about is the way we interact with each other. And again, that's the whole issue of relationships and then the quality of those interactions. I had to do a uh, reflective on my own self and ask myself, so take a typical week of my life. Who do I speak to? In what situation do I speak to them? What do I say and how do I say it? And I will tell you, I was not real happy with it. Of course, when you as a man of God, a woman of God are preaching or teaching, even then, even though you must speak the truth as the Bible tells us as his watchman, but you must do it in love. We must do it with an attitude of, of graciousness. In other words, the intention must always be the health and well-being of the hearers. And so let me begin even uh, this discussion about kindness. And let me relate to you again, our text scriptures, because they come from Ephesians again, chapter four, verse one, that says, uh, walk worthy of the vocation to which we are called. And, and then uh, verse 15, I wanna make sure that we get it right because it really characterizes all that we do as people of God. He says in verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, which is Christ. That means that even as we wanna grow in the Lord, we must speak the truth, but do it in love or in gentleness or in kindness. And then we proceeded on, on Tuesday to talk about speaking kindly. And that's from verse 29 that simply says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good, look at this, to the, to, to the use of edifying. Why? That it may minister grace to the hearers. In the NIV, it says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Look at this, but only that which is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So if I'm gonna again, be kind to you, as I speak to you, I must speak to you with the whole desire to build your life based on the needs that you have, not based on what I think is my agenda. So that's very powerful that it may, it says in NIV, it may benefit all those that listen. That's verse number 29. But let's read a little bit further uh, in our text that we gave to you for this week in chapter four of Ephesians. He says um, in, in verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. 
let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Wow, it covers again our communication, our conversation. But in particular, in this session today is verse number 32. Look what he says. And be ye kind one to another. You read that again. And be ye K-I-N-D, kind, one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And today, I want us to focus in on, and be ye kind. Be ye kind one to another. What does it mean to be kind? So, of course, what I did, I went to my dictionary and looked up the word kind, just in a secular dictionary. Look what it says. Kind is an adjective to, to mean of a good or benevolent nature or disposition. It says having or showing or proceeding from benevolence. In other words, kindness means that the intention is to bless others. I also wrote down another definition uh, in my notes when it means about uh, being kind. What does that really mean? It means being gracious to others. Look what it says, demonstrating a spirit that others find enjoyable and easy to get along with. Read that again. To be kind means to be gracious. It means to demonstrate a spirit that others find enjoyable and easy to get along with. It means an attitude and a tone toward others that others find your presence enjoyable. That when people see you coming, they get excited knowing that your interaction with them is gonna benefit them. Wow, be ye kind. So I went further from the definition of what it means to be kind. And I looked up the synonyms or words that also relate or mean kindness. Let's look at some of these definitions or adjectives to kind, courteous. How, 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 how am I to others? Courteous, friendly, gentle, humane, loving, thoughtful, lenient, indulgent, congenial, of a big heart. Wow. Those synonyms capture what it means to be kind. Now the Bible says, be ye kind. It is an imperative. It is a commandment from the Holy Spirit. It is not an option. It says to us, be ye kind. It directs us through God's spirit. Be ye kind one to another, cordial, courteous, friendly, gracious, what does it mean not to be kind? Well, I looked up also some antonyms or opposites of being kind. Here they are, aloof, antagonistic, cold, cruel, disagreeable, severe, rude, wow, thoughtless, uncaring, unfriendly unmindful, cool. The Bible says, be ye kind. What it really means is that in this world, it is rare to see people practicing kindness toward one another. This is a broken world. Without God, it will remain broken and get worse. That's why today it seems like anger, malice, uh, discontent, complaint, division, uh, revenge. These are the characters of this world. And oftentimes as people of God, even in the church, we get caught up in what is common in the world. And we, we almost learn from others' uh, examples, which are not godly. And so again, the Bible says, be ye kind. It means to do kindness one to another. Be gentle, be nice to others. I wrote in my notes, 
that Satan is a jealous spirit. Satan does not care about others. Satan and his spirit focuses on what he wants. Sometimes when we speak to others and interact with others, what's at the top of our list, our agenda, our major priority is what we want. But if we're going to be kind, we must be people focused as well. We must, in fact, look at an encounter with another person, a, work, a, a co-worker, a family member, a child of God. We must look forward to it as we bring in something beneficial to the table. You say, Bishop, is that po possible? Absolutely, but only as we yield ourselves to the conscientious spirit called the Holy Spirit. The Lord wants us to be peacemakers. He says throughout the word of God, that if you do it my way, you'll be kind. In fact, you'll be known as repairers of the breach. You'll be known as a watered garden. You, you'll be known as those people that are peacemakers because that is the influence of the Holy Spirit in a mature spirituality that is conscientious about others. Every time the Bible says this about being kind, it, it alludes to Jesus in the New Testament. It says, as Christ has been kind to us, how many times have we seen where we have been disobedient, we have been mean-spirited, we have not done God's will, and yet God has been kind to us? Wow. How many times can we see, say, like, uh, the writer of Lamentations, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Why? Because God's goodness, God's kindness is faithful. He gives us what we don't deserve. And so I believe that this teaching on relationships and this one especially on being kind, we've got to make it a higher priority. This week, I want you to practice looking at others in a different light. I want you to practice holding them in higher esteem. In other words, looking at them saying, I want their life to be better and I wanna be an instrument that God uses to make their life better. Because if you think about them in a higher light, you'll speak to them in a kinder tone. So will I. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So speaking is one thing. And then again, I wanna to emphasize to you in this teaching, which says, be kind, let's do from the heart that loves people better, that cares about and values others, to the words that we speak. Now let's get really radical. Be kind. Let us be deliberate and intentionally, deliberately, and what somebody said with malice of forethought, let's think about doing acts of kindness toward people. Not because it's their birthday, or some kind of celebration, just because you care about them. I believe that that is one of the maturities of prayer, where the Lord will just direct you to, to do something. Make a cake for somebody. Buy them a gift. Buy them lunch. Take them to dinner. Give them something tangible. This is not just being nice in a worldly way. This is true godliness. It means you care about others. It means you want to be more, need I say it, like Jesus. Jesus was kind, even to those who were in, especially those who were in distress. He was kind. That woman caught in adultery, the Lord was gracious to her. Those who were caught in sin, he helped them. He helped them to be better. So the admonition, be kind one to another is so critically important. I think as born again Christians, we're gonna ask the Lord, teach me how to be kind in my everyday life. Teach me in small but simple ways to demonstrate kindness. Wow, if you do that, you'll bring healing to people. You'll give them a confidence of the future. You'll give them a hope that they never had before. Because when you do that, you are generating the spirit of Jesus toward them. They will know I am not in this mess alone. 
I am not fighting by myself. Others think well of me. Others care about me. Others do things for me, not because of what I did for them, but because of the spirit of the Holy Spirit of Christ. I believe that this teaching on connection, on relationship, is going to be one of the most powerful and most important teachings we're going to have in that same scripture, which says, be kind. He says two of the things that we may get to this week or next week. He says, be kind, tenderhearted. Wow. Tenderhearted, sensitive, forgiving one another, even as Christ. For even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Being kind is not some kind of a frilly, fragile, sophomoric emotion. It gets to the heart of Jesus Christ and his care and love for the world and for you and I. When we are spiritually minded, we will be kinder. Someone said something to me years ago about people who are Pentecostal or holiness, and I didn't like it at all. I have to admit I laughed about it. They said, they said, Doc, they're clean, but they're mean. We don't want to be mean. We want to be kind. We want that our cleanliness or our godliness will manifest itself in graciousness and in kindness. Look, we've all wronged somebody. Go back and be kind to them. Don't be afraid to apologize. Don't be afraid to go do something nice for them. Don't be afraid to do it. If you do this, God will bless you and you will grow in the Lord. So again, all this week, and as you go forward, endeavor to be kind to people, endeavor to speak kindness, endeavor to do things to them that bring benefit to their life. And I will guarantee you, when you do that, God will, as he always has, reward you with boughs of kindness, with tender mercies, with the gifts and the favor of God that cannot be purchased. Hey, I love you. I send my love to you. My wife, Sister Smith, sends her love to you as well. We celebrate every child of God, everyone that we meet. We value you and we want to value you more as we walk together with you uh, as your leaders. May the Lord's hand be upon you. If there's a need you have, please call the church, connect with us. And again, I urge every person who sees me as your pastor, call our church. I mean this. I want you to become actively involved in ministry. No matter what your age may be, your status may be in the body of Christ, I want you to be a part, an active part of ministry. Because as you minister to others, I will guarantee you God will bless you. He will bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. I want you to seek ye first. Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And guess what? All those things that people scheme and lie to get, they will be added unto you. Hey, again, in this season of chaos in the world, let Christ shine bright in your life. Make him first. Make him preeminent. Love God and love others. And most of all, be kind one to another. God bless you in Jesus' name.